Hello, my name is Pete and I'm the creator of LS Droid. I thought today I would go ahead and give you guys a preview of what I've been working on for the last couple of months. This is basically a complete rewrite of the program. Um, I think right now there's around 30,000 lines that have been changed and there's probably still another 20 or 25,000 lines to go by the time this is ready to release. Um, this will still just cover the Class 2 PCMs, the 99-07 LS. This will include the LB7 E54 support, and this will also include the late 2000 to like end of 05, early 06 front-wheel drive V6 PCMs as well. So I'll show you guys what this looks like. We've got automatic tool identification, so you don't even need to select your COM port anymore. It'll search your PC for a connected tool, finds one, lets you know asks if you want to use it. We've already identified the PCM. Both of these are settings so that you can manually select a tool still if you would like. You can also set it to where it doesn't automatically identify the PCM, which there are reasons for doing that, but for the most part, it's something that no one will ever need to worry about. So we've got a couple different options down here. We've already identified it. We can re-identify it again. We can write a PCM. We can read it. The biggest difference here when you go to write this is I've changed to, I guess you would call it like a guided uh, system to where it makes it more streamlined and simple as far as what you're doing. So we'll take a look. So we have our types of PCM writes that we can do. Calibration writes the most common. Operating system, clone, security block. Security block has already been done for the LB7 slash E54 computer. It's currently being worked on for the P01 and P59. Um, basically, it lets you write the section of the PCM that contains your serial number, VIN number, seed key, stuff like that. And it only takes about, I think it's about eight seconds to do. So it's quite a bit faster and there's no danger when doing that. So for right now, we'll just do a calibration. I'm going to select our file. I already know what file I'm going to use. So we've got a file loaded. We have two choices. We can go back and reselect our flash type, or we can just hit next. And the flash is already starting. As far as the speed goes, nothing has really changed. It's still... Uh, I take that back. It's going to be faster on a lot of computers. For anyone who is running this on a desktop, it's not going to see much difference. People who are running this on a laptop will probably see a pretty significant improvement. There have been a lot of things that have been changed on the back end that will greatly speed this up for computers with low-end CPUs. So we're just about finished with the flash. So now we're going to see the shutdown sequence. This has been changed considerably. Just about finished with this part of it. So this is your key cycle. After a reader writes complete, you need to do a key off cycle. So in this case, it's telling you that you need to turn your key off and press next. And we've got a countdown for you, so you don't have to take and try and guess how long it's been off for. So, shutdown's complete, turn the key back on, and PCM's back up again. So, we're showing that we're still at 100% here, all this information's been updated, so if you would have changed the operating system, it would now update with the new operating system number. So, that's kind of the, an overview on how the read and write works. We've got a few extra uh, options down here. Some of these are probably not going to make the release just because of the amount of time that this has taken. Uh, a couple of these other ones will. We've got a new VIN change feature. So people asked for a box that you could copy and paste a VIN number into. So that's what we've got here. So let's tuck this in here. Notice you can't take and put in more than 17 characters. So it's written the VIN. Now it's telling we need to do a key cycle. This is turning your key power off or your switch for ignition power. This is one of the areas that most people run into trouble with is either they turn off all the power to the PCM, the switch 12 volts, and the constant 12 volt, and all they need to be doing is turning off the switch 12 volt. If you turn off the constant 12 volt, your VIN number won't update correctly. So timer's complete. 
do you want to update the vehicle information to be displayed? If you do, you got to turn the key on. It sounds simple enough. You'd be amazed at how many people don't realize that they've turned the key off and they've got to turn it back on before they go to do something else in the app. And then they take and they run into all sorts of problems. So just a little reminder, tell you turn the key on. Now we're waiting for the PCM to reboot to make sure that all the information has been updated. The VIN number change is not done instantly. It takes time for it to be transferred between the flash chip and the long-term storage memory in the PCM. So it's been updated and we have our new VIN number. The pre-compiled files that came with LSDroid were extremely hard to use in the current release of the app. And it's something that I've been aware of ever since I, I did it in the first place, but it was all I could do to begin with. So I've thought about this for, well, over a year now, and this is basically what I've come up with. It allows you to take and search by file, search through the files by the file type or a parameter that you're looking for. So for example, if we want to search for an engine size, that would give us a drop down here. These are all the files that the app has built into it for stock files of the various engine sizes. So we'll just go ahead and pick a 5.3. And these are the files that I currently have loaded into the app that are available for flashing. So all of these are just 5.3 files, but if you'll notice they've got, well, I guess, yeah, all these are just, these are all 460 transmissions. So let's say we're going to take and do by the vehicle type. Pick a Silverado. So now we have 5348 6 liter. We have some with an Allison Trans in the 81. We have some of these that have a 4L80. So it makes it a lot easier to take and search through the files. There's probably going to be around 60 or 70 files that the app is going to come with already compiled into it that you can select from. These are stock files that there's no, nothing that's been disabled or turned off in them, but these are. If you were to take and get the same file from GM's flashing service and you just wanted to stockpile to start with, that's what these are for. So the last thing here we've got, segment swap utility. My Android app has had this for several years now. Doing this on PC turned out to be a lot harder than what I was anticipating, especially once we started adding in other PCM types like the E54. Um, this is also needs to be able to something that can carry forward into the CAN based PCMs for like the E38s, the E67s and things like that. So there was a lot of, a lot of work that went into the back end of this to make it so it's got long term functionality and it isn't limited to just working on, uh, you know, one or two types of PCMs. It does not work on the V6 PCMs because the V6 PCMs don't actually use calibration segments. So there's not a whole lot that you can do there. Just give you a quick quick little example of this, like two files. So we had our operating system number. If the operating system number between the two files does not match, it will not let you load the second file in. The operating system numbers still have to match. The biggest thing we've done here is we have a segment name called security. This is the security block that contains your VIN number, the seed key, and things like that. So it allows you to take and actually switch that part of the segment in your file so that you're not stuck using the one you've got for whatever reason. Maybe you've got a file that has a blank segment and you need to put one into it. This will give you an easy way to take and put one into it. All you got to do, these are just little checkbox switches. So you check it, switch between which segment you're going to use. File one will use values out of file one ID column. Check it, you're going to use the value from the second column. So select these that you want. When you're done, all you do, create a new file. Give it a file name, hit save, and you've got your new file. This does not alter your files that you are using the segments from. It will create you a new file for you so that you don't accidentally end up screwing something up. Uh, there's a bit more in the app that isn't really accessible yet or that isn't finished, but this kind of gives you a pretty good overview of what's going on. The uh, There is an actual settings screen now with functional settings. One of the things we've got here you can select what size what size blocks you want to write. If you've got a vehicle with a data bus that isn't cooperating, going to smaller block sizes oftentimes will take and help get around that issue. For let's say you've got a module or something that's not cooperating, this will help you take it probably get around that. It doesn't always work, but most of the time it will. These are your scan tool detections for when the app first connects. If you want it to automatically identify the PCM and bus type, these are going to be our new 
where you have we've always had the debug log in the app the biggest change here is this now gives you an option to make the debug log save to a file and display in the app or save to a file and display nothing in the app for example message log here is empty because we were saving this to a file on lower end PCs that may not have a great processor saving it to a file is going to dramatically speed it up as opposed to displaying it in the app so that's something that's going to take and help a lot of people out we also have a new option here create backup file in zip format so when you read a PCM you'll save your bin file that bin file is the only thing you have to fall back on a lot of times people will make accidental changes to their original file in which case they're left with nothing to fall back on when this is checked this will also create a zipped version of the bin file when the bin file itself is saved that will give you a backup so that you don't accidentally take and make alterations to your original or not make a copy of it you'll always have a copy this way the RLE compression has always been there. It, it works in most situations. Sometimes people run into, tr run into trouble using it. I've made some changes that should make it to where lower end PCs no longer have problems with the RLE compression. It, when it hits RLE blocks in like the P59 when you're doing a, a, an operating system flash, it, the app was trying to go faster than what the PC was capable of processing. So we've made some changes to slow that down a little bit and it seems to have worked on a couple of the netbooks I've tested this on. Um, variable address is something that I had my Android app at one point and I removed because it never worked quite right. Basically when you request the PCM to upload the kernel to it that we're going to use for reading and writing, it has to be loaded to a specific address than PCM. If your PCM has been flashed, let's say you altered a file on Tuner Pro with the wrong XDF and you've corrupted part of the segments of the checksums in it, and now you've scrambled the PCM's RAM. The address that the kernel would normally load to is no longer available. It needs to have the address shifted. Well, what the app does now is it's able to automatically recalculate address shifting and it will start trying variable addresses until it finds one that either it can upload to or until it runs out of addresses to actually try. Um, this so far has worked out pretty well. It's not always going to work for people, but in a lot of situations this will save having to pull the cover off and grounding the pin out to force the PCM to let you get the, get the kernel to upload. So just another little thing that I've done here to take and try and make it easier for people to use once something has gone wrong. The advanced options we can see back over here. We've got these along the bottom here. So PCM details and change VIN are already done. Segment IDs and CVN numbers, something I'm still working on, but those will be in the app. Um, they don't make you read it. You're not even going to be able to see it unless you have the advanced options enabled. But for the people that did want them, it's still there, but it's only there if you want to see them so it doesn't confuse new users. Um, key options, this is not a tuner lock like key cracker or anything this is for situations where let's say you know what the key for your PCM is you can read your PCM out by forcing it to unlock open your bin file and then extract your key this will let you take and then manually enter your key that is used for flashing with the reason you would want to do that is let's say you have one that's tuner locked you force it you read it out you get your key you're going to go back over here, and for a write, you're going to select your security block write. And that's going to let you take and rewrite the section of the PCM that has your key in it. This will effectively let you remove a tuner lock without having to actually flash the PCM and overwrite what you already have. At the same time, you can also take your existing file, come in here to your security switch, and you can segment swap a segment out of another file that's got a stock seed key in it right into your file and flash it back in and you don't have to try and mess with actually extracting the seed key yourself if you just want to get rid of the tuner lock so again it's something that it, it's an advanced option it's not for everyone but it's there and it's something that I think a lot of users are going to end up appreciating so this is basically an overview this has been several months in the process and I've had a lot of help from Jason um, and a few other people have taken done some testing for me and I've got a lot of suggestions and feedback from people so this is just kind of an overview of how things are looking and what's changing and what you can expect coming up later this year so let me know what you think